If the typical perspective on systems thinking is unworkable and unacceptable, then what's an alternative perspective that, that is acceptable? In this session, I will attempt to go ahead and present that. So if I think about the way that we create the future, we begin with a situation that we would prefer not to be the way it is. We would prefer that it be some alternative. And that gap encourages us to develop some level of understanding with the intent of developing a strategy to go ahead and improve the situation. The difficulty lies in the fact that typically we don't understand the, the complex, complicated nature of what it is that we're actually trying to understand so that, that based upon an in, insufficient understanding, we develop an inadequate strategy and we use that strategy to make some effect on the current situation, though it's typically a, a strategy which also doesn't take into account an understanding of the time and space separation of our actions and their implications so that the strategy doesn't minimize unintended consequences. So oftentimes the unintended consequences make the situation worse or even worse than that, they create new problems that somebody has to solve in the future, which is why I continue to say that we have met the enemy and he is us. And it is often said that, that the majority of today's problems are the direct result of, of yesterday's answers. So if, if this is the predicament that we find ourselves in, this level of understanding that's insufficient is typically insufficient because we live in a in the in the moment we have a sense of events rather than realizing that the event is actually the result of some evolution time change of things i mean if you if you go in the bathroom and you turn on the water and you watch the bathtub fill with water you can see that that filling the bathtub is a change that happens over time. Where on the alternative, though, is that if you go in the bathroom, turn the water on, and you leave, and you forget that you have the water running in the bathtub, and for some reason the overflow protection isn't working, and you go back 30 minutes later, and there's a flood in the bathroom. The flood looks like an event because you never paid attention to all of the changes that happened over time for it to become a flood. And that's what happens most of the time with situations that we perceive as being problems, we were so engrossed in so many other things going on around us that there was some aspect of something which was developing over time that we weren't paying attention to. And when it finally got to a certain level or state or something, it got our attention and we paid attention to it and, it, and we perceived it as being an event. Well, it really wasn't. There was some pattern of behavior or trend that evolved over time that that brought it to the current state. Though those tr trends that occurred over time just didn't happen out of nowhere, they're actually a result of some set of interactions that set um, relationships that interact over time to to create these patterns of behavior that end in this situation that we perceive to be an event that we need to deal with. But this network of interactions also didn't arrive from nowhere. It was actually the result of, of some set of stakeholders who, through their actions, created this set of relationships. And, and this picture, I think, is absolutely marvelous because it points out what is likely or should I say, more often than not to be true, in that this group of stakeholders who created the situation were absolutely not on the same wavelength. They had different mental models of what it was that they were attempting to accomplish and how they were intending to go about it so that what you end up with is a set of relationships that are, that are chaotic and create chaos at, at best most of the time. So that the understanding that needs to develop is, okay, I need to understand the event and the patterns and this set of relationships and the perspectives, the mental models, 
the objectives of the stakeholders that was responsible for creating this because if this situation is to change it is the stakeholders who are the only ones that can change it now in terms of creating this understanding if we begin with the situation and we have this complex reality that is that is far too complex for us to understand the question is how do we figure out what to do with it or what things to address in this in this complicated mess well what we do is we use the situation as a basis for focus and we develop a set of relevant relationships which is some cross section of of this complex reality it's those relationships which are relevant to creating this situation and therefore it's a, a simplification and when we get it right that set of relevant relationships promotes understanding and hopefully insights as to how to deal with this set of relationships to change them so that they actually create that alternative that we would pursue prefer the situation to be other than the way it is now there's there's a comment that goes around the systems community on an ongoing basis that from george box it says all models are wrong some models are useful and and some people debate this endlessly the the thing to point out or the benefit of it is to realize that that this is just some subset of all of the possible relationships and therefore it isn't reality it's a simplification of reality intended to promote understanding and to the extent that it promotes understanding it's really a beneficial set of relationships or a model that that helps us understand and the the, the secret of this set of relationships is in this saying because you understand one you think you understand two because one and one is two but first you have to understand and 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 is is the essence of the answer for understanding because it is the nature of how multiple things interact together a and b and c and d and understanding that set of relationships is is what promotes the understanding and hopefully the insights that we need to figure out how to deal with this situation to cause it to be the, the desired alternative. So the essential systems thinking is understanding relationships and their implications. That's it. All of the things that I've talked about to this in the last several slides were in fact to get to this point to say the essence of systems thinking is simply understanding relations and their implications and if the question is why why is so that we can figure out what the relevant relationships are to promote understanding to provide the insights that we need so that we understand the pattern of behavior and the network of interactions and the stakeholder perspectives so that we can in fact have a sufficient understanding to develop a strategy which improves the situation and minimizes the unintended consequences which typically make the situation worse or create more problems that we or someone else has to deal with. So all of this boils down to systems thinking is about understanding relationships and their implications. The question that arises at this point is how? How do I actually go about doing this in a way that's really simple and straightforward? And in the next seg segment, I will prevent, provide you with an approach to doing that, which is based upon one word, and the word is and. So hope you found this informative, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.